Hey, Dr. McGowan here. Let's talk about ESG and suture durability. So I've previously addressed the issue of whether sutures can actually break in a somewhat silly video, but discussing the point that these sutures are really strong and it's very unlikely that uh, you can generate enough force to physically break a suture by overeating, for instance. The sutures themselves are a sturdy polypropylene material and they're anchored on either side by a metal anchor on one end and a plastic cinch device on the other and that's a very sturdy setup. However, that's not to say they can't come loose and that's an important distinction that I want to discuss in a little bit more detail. So if the sutures themselves are not placed correctly to begin with, they can actually loosen or pull out over time and that would cause the ESG to fail. And really this is ultimately a technical issue, it's a technique thing. So when we're doing this procedure, we ensure that the sutures are all placed correctly so that they will last long term. Now, admittedly, there are not very many long term studies uh, looking at ESG. The longest is five years out. There are also many studies at two years. And we know in our own practice, starting back in 2017 and 18, that this procedure is definitely durable and long lasting when done correctly. What could lead to suture failure? Uh, and believe me, I've seen this. We've had patients come to see us, many patients who had an ESG performed, and it really came apart early on. Now, why did that happen? Did the sutures break? No. What happened is the sutures pulled into the stomach and loosened. And this is what it looks like when we find loose sutures after ESG, patients who have come to see us to have these fixed, and you can just see a lot of loose suture material. Again, these didn't break, they just loosened uh, and pulled into the stomach. There, the primary reason that that happens is the sutures were not placed in a full thickness manner. This is something that we stress quite a bit in the field, placing each suture full thickness. What does that mean? It means when we pass the needle through the stomach wall from the inside, the needle is traveling through all of the layers of the stomach and then back in. So it's passing through the mucosa, submucosa, muscle layer, and then the serosa, that outermost layer, and then it comes back in. If you were to look at the stomach from the outside, you would actually see the suture traversing through the stomach wall and back in. That effectively locks that suture in place so it can't pull into the stomach, and that's the key. If someone is performing this procedure and it does not achieve full thickness, maybe the, the needle just passes through some of the inner layers of the stomach or the mucosa, over time that suture will just pull into the stomach. It's not through sturdy enough layers. So every time we pass the needle through the stomach wall, we are trying to achieve full thickness. This is ultimately a matter of experience and technique. And there's a couple of tricks that we use in the field or clues, indications to help us know we are full thickness every time. So every time I pass that needle, I know I'm full thickness. Then I can feel really confident that the sutures will hold long term. On a very technical side, how do we know that sutures are placed full thickness when we're working from the inside? A lot of it is feel, so when we close our external handle with the overstitch device, you can actually feel there's resistance as a needle passes through the various stomach layers, and so there's a palpable or audible crunch or click feeling when we pass the needle through the stomach wall. And so we want to feel that every time we uh, close that handle and pass the needle through. Keep in mind that with each running suture that we place, there's a total of 8 to 12 sometimes more stitches that we're placing along the way. So each of these sutures is anchored in a full thickness manner eight to 12 times. So these are very, very sturdy. So very, very important to place everything full thickness. That is the number one reason that this procedure could fail. Number two is that as we tighten the suture, after we finished with each suture and we tighten it, if someone were to over tighten and really pull that suture tight, that will create so much pressure on the stomach tissue that, again, the sutures could, could eventually pull into the stomach. This is what we call cheese wiring. The suture is basically cutting its way through the tissue and then popping into the stomach. Again, another reason that things would loosen up over time. However, if each suture is placed full thickness and not over cinched or over tightened, it will ultimately stay in place and the stomach will be, remain in its smaller configuration. We've seen this in our program with uh, countless evaluations of stomachs after a year or more following ESG. And here are just a few examples radiographically of what the stomach looks like after a year or longer. And you can still see preservation of that narrow sleeve-like shape in each of these examples. We've also seen this endoscopically. So uh, here's an example of a patient who had an ESG procedure uh, over a year ago, has lost more than 25% of her total body weight. And what you can see here is complete preservation of the ESG 
There's no visible sutures, loose sutures. You really can't identify any sutures. They're all healed within the stomach wall, but you can get the sense that the stomach remains very narrow in the middle, and it's, and it's actually still much shorter than a normal stomach. You do see some areas where there's these mucosal bridges which have healed in over the sutures. Ultimately, all sutures have remained intact and healed, and this person will have long-term durability of their procedure. So very, very reassuring that when this procedure is done correctly, it will last. One final point that I'll make that has nothing to do with technique. As a patient, over time, your sense of fullness will evolve. So the stomach, when we first perform the procedure, is at its absolute tightest. Your capacity is at its smallest. The stomach is somewhat swollen inside and there's inflammation around the stomach, keeping it somewhat rigid and less flexible. But over time, especially after three to six months, the stomach will fully heal. It will then become a bit more flexible and stretchy and so your capacity will seem a bit larger over time. That's normal. That does not mean sutures broke or stretched or something's gone awry. What that means is your stomach has adjusted to its smaller size. Uh, it's a bit more compliant, so you can accommodate a bit more food, and that's not a bad thing. It's just something to be aware of, that we, we don't expect your capacity to be limited to two ounces forever. You'll actually be able to eat a small plate, uh, about a cup or two of food long-term after this procedure at each meal. So hopefully this was helpful in further clarifying the suture issue related to ESGs. Again, if you're going to an experience center and a physician who has performed this procedure many times, uh, you can generally feel quite confident that this is going to be a long lasting procedure to help you not only get the weight off, but also keep the weight off long term. Thanks.